Right, hello and welcome to the Geek Lab. And as many of you will know already, I am now the proud owner of a Mac M1, which is all great. But there are a few occasions uh, when I do need access to Windows programs that have not been created for the Mac. Now, I followed all the tutorials, but came across endless issues. But then I found a method that works perfectly. So, I'm now going to share that with you. First thing is first, we're going to need three downloads. The first is a program called UTM. I have no idea what UTM stands for, but it offers virtualization and emulation of many operating systems from different processor architectures. To acquire this, go to the first link down below and either download the DNG file or go to the App Store. For this tutorial, we'll go to the download DMG file. Once downloaded, for ease of use, I'll drag the utm.dmg file onto the desktop and then clear that. Double click it. Now, normally you just drag this across to applications to install it, but I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Once it's done copying to applications, close that window. You can get rid of the DMG file and you can eject UTM as we no longer need those. Next, we're going to acquire a copy of Windows itself for ARM. We can start this process at the second link in the description, which is this one. Now this is on the Windows Insider preview page, so you'll have to join the program to download. But do not worry, it's all free and anybody can join up. Follow the instructions if you need to join or just sign in and then go back to the page in the link. When you're shown the option for which version to download, click this top one here, because it will not work on the other one for some reason. Click confirm, when I'll validate me. I can check my language. We only got one, so a bit of a waste of time that. And it will validate me. And you can click on the download now. And I'll download lovely stats. Obviously, this is a large file. So whilst this is downloading, we can move on to downloading Spice Guest Tools. Spice Guest Tools are the drivers that once we have installed Windows 11, we install within it to give us working drivers for the graphics and networking. So if you go to the third link, you'll come to this Spice Guest Tools page. Just simply click on the download, wait for the download to occur. And once that's done, just drag that onto your desktop for later use. We'll now come back once Windows has downloaded. Right, Windows is just finishing up there, it's download, and this is where the problem can start because in all tutorials it tells you to use the VHDX file in UTM but that's where it kept going wrong for me and it kept hanging up so what I found is a technique where we convert the VHDX file to what's known as a QCAL2 file and for us to do that conversion we need a program called Homebrew for which we all need to go to link number four in the description actually Make sure your uh, that is on the desktop for ease of use. And now we'll go to Homebrew. Once there, the process we follow to acquire this is slightly different from the norm. First of all, below where it says install Homebrew, you will see a line of code. Click the copy symbol to copy this to your clipboard and open your terminal, which is here. Yeah. And other. Right, what you need to do is paste that code into terminal and press enter. It will then ask you for your password. This is your logon password, so just put that in. Okay. Now, I've already got this installed, so the options that you see coming up on the screen may differ from what's on my screen. Okay, this is finished. Now, if you've not installed this before, you'll see that Homebrew uh, tells you to copy two commands into the terminal. So if you just highlight, copy, 
and paste that into terminal that will sort that out next in the terminal we need to install the actual conversion program which is called QEMU so type brew install QEMU press enter and because I've installed it before it comes up with the reinstall so I will type reinstall QEMU there we go and you'll see it downloads quite a bit on this one and it can take quite a while okay what we're going to do now is use QEMU to convert our windows inside a preview VHDX file to a QCAL2 file right you can see I'm recording this again because I've just messed up the command but what we're going to do now is use uh, QEMU to convert uh, the windows inside a preview file from VHDX to QCAL2 so we do that by typing QEMU dash IMG space convert space dash P space dash capital O space QCAL2 we then drag in our windows file on then ensure it's just one space on the end and drag that file in again but this time delete VHDX and change that to QCAL2 press enter it will now start converting it to QCAL2 very nice okay once that's done we're now finished with the terminal and this so we can get rid of them and what we need to do is go to launchpad go back find UTM there it is start that up and we will select I've already got uh, one installed here I don't want to mess that one up so I'm doing a, a new one just for this uh, tutorial we'll select create a new virtual machine virtualize and we want Windows uh, we don't want to download it we want to browse so what you need to do is go to your desktop and find the QCAL2 file open continue uh, hardware you set this as you require remember you need some for your for your system so on the M1 here I run this at just over six gigabytes it's just the default option there uh, leave CPU cores at default press continue you can have a shared directory if you wish press continue just go through these everything looks good uh, press save it now starts to set up the virtual machine whilst it's doing that we can uh, get rid of that because we don't need that anymore get to that empty the bin thank you very much okay it's ready to roll so what we do now press play and if you see gobbledygook at the top of this screen there you know you're doing well there it is in my experience if it doesn't show that gobbledygook uh, it's going to crash So this will uh, take a few moments and it may reboot. Okay, once it's done that, we can go through the options and set things as we want. Now this way you might come across a problem because there should be an option here that says I don't have internet. But it often doesn't appear, so it's the same as here. So what you have to do in this scenario is press Shift F10 and then type OOBE backslash bypass NRO. Now reboot it, and if you go through the options again, that uh, option will appear, as you'll see in a second.
And there you go. This time it says I don't have internet. So you can click that. It wouldn't work anyway at the moment because networking isn't working until we install Spice Guest tools. So you can accept on these. Right, you can uh, do all these. Scroll down and click no on everyone. So I know most people will. And there we go, we are at the Windows desktop. Not finished yet though, because the networking doesn't work, if you should try it. And also, if you go on display settings, you will find you cannot change scale or resolution, display resolution. So for that, we need to install Spice Guest Tools. So we need to put that into the CD drive. So to do that, we need to power off the virtual machine, shut down. Once that is done, we can go to the settings over here, click on the CD DVD drive thing, browse, and Spice Guest Tools option desktop. Open. Once that's done, we can relaunch the virtual machine. Right, click on enter, put my password in. Right, so we then go to the finder. Uh, CD drive and you'll find Spice Guest Tools is there. So double click on that. Yes. Next. I agree. You'll instantly notice you have a large screen. So if I click on that, uh, you can see we now have. Full screen glory. Oh yes. So what we need to do click on edge. I don't want any of this. Don't allow continue. Don't allow continue. There we go. Windows for you. That's a little bit. There we go. You can see the desktop. So it's all working inside the desktop. And just squeeze that down. You'll now see we can go to Good old YouTube. Oops, slight misspelling, but there we go. YouTube. There we go. Oh, and you can see. And you can see it's all working nicely. I'm not going to put any videos on because of copyright. Well, there we go. So that's Windows running nicely within OS X. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoy your new install. If your tutorial worked for you, then uh, please like it and let us know in the comments. If you've got any questions, then uh, please let us know in the comments. If you want more videos like this or retro gaming, retro technology, then please consider subscribing. You can join us on Facebook, Twitter, links below. Just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching.